Good morning, everyone. Happy Wednesday. I am here with my web designer, Teresa. How are you this morning, Teresa? I'm fabulous this morning. Okay, good. I'm fabulous too. A little exhausted <laughs> from yesterday. Lots of activity yesterday between the release of my book and um, and my father's move into his new apartment and the shysters who kept his furniture hostage on the truck uh, move for less. I am going to be destroying this company when I tell you it was that bad. But, you know, I had to think back of my book, respond with confidence and try to follow my own advice. And I will admit I didn't do so well <laughs> <laughs> because I really couldn't walk away and decompress when they were, you know, when you see your 85 year old father starting to get upset and really getting upset, like take my effing stuff back to Vegas. I don't care. It was so sad. This company move for less is horrible. They're literally crooks as far as I'm concerned. So anyway, we will take care of that, but I loved your topic for today, right? The confidence you need to create an authentic website. So let's talk about that. So, and I have to say last night I was reading your book and that's where the idea of this came from because as I'm looking at this and like the very first section is talking about decompress and I thought, you know, that's honestly when it comes to planning out your website content, whether you're building it yourself or you're working with a designer, it doesn't really matter. You have to be in your content and you, there's so much we want to share and I've seen people where they squish everything about every possible thing into the website and that's overwhelmed that's going to hurt you and it's also not really authentic to you because you're not not ever going to be that person that does everything all the time for all the people and so taking that step back to really just decompress and like okay who am i yes why why am i doing this you know what what am I doing? What am I offering? Like, what am I doing to make my corner of the world a better place, a more beautiful place, a more functional place, whatever it is. I don't care if you're making coffee or you're an interior designer or you design bookmarks. We're all doing something to make our corner of the world a better place. And getting really clear on that takes some serious in-depth look and confidence to get there. It really does. And it's funny you're saying this because I even go through on a regular basis, what is my long-term goal? What is my short-term goal? And then how do I feed them both into, you know, having confidence in the decision of what my vision for myself is and how I serve other people. And then how do you portray that on your website for the now and like a vision into the future? Right. Combo. It's like right. it's really hard to achieve sometimes. It is. And in a clear way that really connects with people. And so what we do a lot of times, we either put everything in or we fall back onto that polished buzzword kind of language, which isn't genuine and it's not not authentic. It doesn't connect people to you. And I mean, we've said I've said this before on this you've got to put you in your website. Like you've got to be your voice at the center of it all. And so having that confidence to really define who you are, what you do, how you offer it, how you operate, what are your boundaries, which is a big one that I talk about with my own coaching clients for helping people get their website together. We start with boundaries every single time. What are those boundaries? Because you've got to put that in there and you've got to do so confidently if you're going to have that really truly successful business that you're striving for. Definitely, because you know what, you everyone goes into setting up their business model and setting up their website with, well, what do people want? And I'm going and you're saying the same thing, right? Let's go from it from the other way. What do you want yes. in your life? What do you want your business to look like? What do you want to attract rather than getting stuck in the well, what will people actually pay for? And what do people actually want? And that like Yes, that has to be part of it in your journey to figure that out. But honestly, I don't lead with that. Never. I lead with, right, what can I help people with? Let me make sure I'm portraying that authentically. Yeah. And then I add the layer of what services will people actually 
feel like they're attracted to and click the button for, right? It's like this yeah, combination. It is. And like you said, when people are like, well, what will people pay for? What do people want? What are other people are doing? That's when we get caught up into this charging way too less for our services, offering services that we hate, that we're yes. not going to do. And when you offer a service that you hate, you end up resenting the customers who purchase it, <laughs> which means you don't have customer retention. We're okay. not ourselves. We're pushing our boundary lines, working hours we don't want to work when we'd rather be with family, being available in ways we don't want to be available. And then we're miserable in our business because we started with, well, what does the rest of the world think and want and, and do? Instead of what is it I want? And how Absolutely. can I create that? Absolutely. You know what? And it's so true that it all does come from a confident place. And I can tell immediately when my clients are stuck in perfectionism or they don't have the confidence yet because they'll say things like, and this is normal guys, everybody does this. I've done it. I still do it at times. Well, what should I do? And what should it look like? And yeah. you know, well, what's the right way to do it? And you, you know, the minute people start using those words and if you're using them in your own thought process, what's the right way to do it? you know you're stuck in possible perfectionism and not yet achieve the confidence you need to be authentic, both in your website, in your business model, with yeah. your clients, in, in the way you portray to the world. And that lack of confidence really just permeates everything you do. Well, and I do like when a client, I, I'm working with a new client and they say, can you make my website look like these three industry leaders websites, you know, and I'm like, no, and I don't, <laughs> and I won't. But you know, one client early on in, when I was doing it, she just was insistent. And honestly, where I'm at now, like I would have never taken her on as a client, but I built a website that I thought would really represent her. And she's like, no, I want this piece and this piece from these big people. And so I gave her exactly what she asked for. And her website was hideous. She's like, well, this isn't very pretty. And I'm like, nope, it's not. <laughs> you know? Right, because you're piecemealing shit together rather than you're starting to be somebody you're not. You know, I think it's so hard, and for me as well, sometimes to really sit in silence and figure out who you want to be, yeah. how you want to portray yourself, how do you want your business to look, what services, like you said, do you love so that you don't resent when they come your way and you're not miserable. And that frenzy that so many people are in because they're listening to so many, you know, fabulous coaches and podcasts and other people and other influencers in their space and blah, blah, blah. like everyone gets so crazy that sitting quietly is how you gain the confidence is mm -hmm. part of it. It's not all of it, but it's part of how you gain the confidence to be okay with who you are and what you want to do and what you want to offer. Well, and, and I found too, when I take the time to sit quietly about what is it I want, like, what do I want to achieve for myself, for my business, for my clients, for my family? Like, what is it? Who do I want to be? Then I naturally gravitate to the coaches, the podcasts, the books that inspire and support that dream. Whereas when I'm sitting here thinking, oh my God, I have to make money and I have to have this successful business. I'm like a sponge soaking everything in. And a lot of it is not going to support that dream because I haven't got clear on what the dream is. And it takes confidence again to come back and say, what do I want? And then tell the world, this is what I want. And then take the steps to make it happen. Cause yeah, you, you tell the world what you, you know, you tell the world who you are and what you do and who you serve through your website. And then it permeates out through every pore. Once you get there, once you get clarity, that yeah. clarity and that confidence is, you know, I think is so hard for so many people. And I think I've said this before, many lies that over the five and or so years, five years, two months that I've been coaching, I realize more and more that what I'm giving people is the confidence to do whatever, right? <laughs> to do whatever they want to do. So my book, Respond With Confidence, is hopefully giving people the tools they need to learn how to respond to difficult situations with confidence. Also, in my coaching, it's, it's, it's charge your worth, right? 
find the confidence in your skill and to create the life that you want and create the service model. So everything goes back to confidence. So maybe I'm just a confidence coach. Maybe. <laughs> You kind of are. I mean, you definitely helped my confidence. There's no doubt. Oh, oh, yeah, I'm glad. Yeah, it's hard. And I think that if I created my first, very, very first website when I was an art consultant myself and I threw it together and I was really proud of the horrible website it was, no, <laughs> that I think back and look back, oh, um, but confidence comes in stages too, right? So, it, it's not something you can automatically boom, you know, you have, I can't even snap anymore. Oh my God. My fingers are, <laughs> my fingers are stiff. Um, confidence is not always something that happens overnight is it's a journey and your website is part of that journey. Yeah. So I love the fact that you want people to think it through yeah. before they just throw it up. Yes. Yes. And I want to toss out one more time that that free course library I have, there is a website content course that really walks you through thinking it through and it's free it's totally free Free, we love free i know but it walks you through thinking about what are those boundaries what is it that you want to do what is it that you want to give how do you want to share your story so that people connect with you it, it does all of that for you because it's important again to put you in your website not some polished marketing buzzword people don't connect with that we're numb honestly, to that kind of stuff. So totally, totally. Okay, great. So make sure you post the link to that free course that you have so people can get in touch with how they want to get tell me exactly what they're going to come out with at the end of that particular course. And I know you have a lot of free ones, right? So with that particular course, it is all the written content for their website. So from their, I mean, everything, it's going to dive into the contact page, the services page, how to structure them. Do you need sales pages? Do you need, like, what is it that you need? It's going to dive in and help you plan all of the written content, which is one of those things that most people think, oh, pff, it'll be easy. I'll, I'll struggle with the tech first. And then they put a little writer's block when they sit down and start looking at, what do I say? I don't know what to say. How do I describe this? And then they fall into the trap of copying somebody else's marketing buzz. And then they're not in it. So this is putting you in your website. It's helping you plan how to write your story, how to write your or your about me page, all of that stuff. So love it. Love it. OK, excellent. Thank you so much, Teresa. Yeah, everybody go have a great Wednesday. I am decompressing from a fabulous day yesterday. We did hit number one um, in many categories uh, for new releases in my book. We hit new release bestseller number one in women and business, which was so exciting. We What was the other one I hit? Relations. That was another one I saw you hit number one in customer relations. Customer relations, which was such a great category to hit number one in because that's a lot of what the book is about. So um, just another, I've sent out so many thank yous in my lives and in my Instagram and in my Facebook and an email, but just again, thank you everyone who supported uh, the book launch yesterday. We made our goals and it's just going to keep me high for the whole week. Yay. <laughs> so, all right, everyone go have a great Wednesday and we will see you next week. All right. Bye. Bye. Thanks, Teresa.